Mina, Ohio Gazimus, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Back with the next psalm, Psalm 15. This tag teams very well with the last message of men are inherently evil. I just think it's a really appropriate follow-up, Psalm 14 and then Psalm 15. So I'm going to read it in its entirety. It's very tiny. Don't worry. Don't click away. Um, but yeah, it's just a really good follow-up. So let's dive in. The title of the psalm, a psalm of David, but that doesn't sound like a title. Anyway, verse 1. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. <clears throat> so we saw in Psalm 14 that basically there is no one righteous. <coughs> There's no one who really seeks after God. There's no one who fulfills God's law and God's way. So who can dwell with God in his tabernacle and in his holy hill? The people who do the thing, the things, sorry, plural, mentioned in this list. We've heard many times the Ten Commandments. We've heard Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. I would like to propose, especially in tag team of Psalm 14, this list of righteous, good characteristics of Psalm 15. It's a good list. I don't think anyone would really disagree with the fact that this list is a good one. Um, and in whose, I will mention this real quick. In whose eyes a vile person is despised? Obviously, we're commanded to ever love everyone as a Christian. However, when you look at people who commit certain crimes and do certain types of sins. I was like, do I want to mention some? Sure, why not? People who break and enter into others' homes. People who commit adultery. People who people who continuously lie about their life, about what they've done. People who I'll say, well people who slack off at work are annoying, but that's not necessarily a criminal thing. People who abuse their spouse, abuse their children. And of course, then there are even the, wor the, worse, the worse people, um, murderers, so forth, and so on. Um, taking violence to an all new level. Those are, we don't hate those people, but at the same time, when I look at someone doing those things, I would like immediately just say, I would call the cops and be like, okay, this person needs to be taken out of the picture. And they need, to, they need somewhere calm and quiet to sit down and think about what they've done and be put in a place where they cannot do that to me anymore. So, that's that, and when I read that part, that's what I think of when it means to despise a vile person. I'm going to love them, but I'm going to make sure they're well away from me and my family. I'm not going to have someone like that dwelling near me. Not consciously or willfully, anyway. So I believe that's what that part of the verse means. It's a good chapter. It's good stuff. And I think if you look over the list, all of us are guilty of, of breaking each and every one of those things. Guys, we're not just sinners because we did a one-off, horrible thing that no one knew about and, you know, oh, well, you know, no one knows about it, so I'm good, or, well, yeah, I guess that one makes me a sinner now. I mean, now, a lot of us, a lot of us have done that, Right? Don't, I don't want you to admit it on the camera. I don't want you to type that in the YouTube comment section. Please do not confess the illegal activities on my YouTube comment section. I do not desire that. And quite frankly, it wouldn't even be the smartest thing to do. Because YouTube is one of the most popular websites, and I have no doubt that it is highly monitored when someone starts speaking about illegal stuff down there. I don't want to hear it. Please don't type it in there. But we've all done a few things that really weren't that great. <coughs> Excuse me. We've all done some things that really are not that good. But even more than that, yes, I do mean, I mean that. Even more than that, there's just the daily things, the, the, li the little evils that we do about the backbiting, hurting people, taking revenge where we shouldn't, um, thinking something bad about someone, saying something bad about something, someone doing something bad to make sure someone else is hurt. Um... You know, breaking our word, not letting our yes be yes, not letting our no be no. Sometimes not reviling the vile person. If it's someone, a friend of ours, a loved one of ours, we let them get away with 
Sometimes horrible things. Because they're our loved ones, so we should protect them. And no, you shouldn't. Um, that stuff is bad, and it needs to stop. And if you know what's going on, you need to do something about it. You need to despise the vile person. We, All of us, if we haven't done every single thing on that list, there are a few that we break on a pretty regular basis, and that's, that's the honest truth. I have found as a Christian, I break them less and less, and I obey these commandments more and more. Uh, my life is on the upswing and not the downswing. Doesn't mean I don't occasionally mess up, but it does mean I'm not living in a lifestyle like that on a continuous pattern. Whereas most people who are not Christians, that's normally how they live their lives. They don't live their, I wouldn't expect them to live their lives in, um, um, in obedience to the Word of God or to the Bible. It's not in their nature. It's not in human nature to do things a godly way, thus reinforcing my original point in the first video, that men are inherently evil. Evil according to the Word of God. Evil according to God's standards. And that's why we need a perfect Savior in the form of Jesus. That's why we need Him. So guys, that's it for this video. Uh, kind of a tag team thing there with the last one that I put out. I know it's a little bit of a harsh message. It's not the nicest thing out there. At the same time, it's a very important truth. And again, like I said in the first video, an essential one to understanding our need, our inherent need for a Savior, which Jesus is. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I love you. God bless.